This is going to be titled 13 Reasons Why Pride Month is Wrong. The first one and the most obvious reason is because pride goeth before destruction. In Proverbs 16, 18 through 19, it says, Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. When someone is walking around like they are all that and like they have it all figured out, that's usually when they fall flat on their face. Pride is never a good thing. You shouldn't be prideful in any way, especially when it comes to your sin. When it comes to your sin, the Lord is looking for you to realize your guilt of sin. And to come to him for salvation. Because Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. He shed his blood for our sins. He was buried and resurrected. Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom's sin was pride. And I don't know if you are familiar with Sodom. But it was destroyed because the land was full of wickedness and homosexuality. As they call it today. Ezekiel 16.49 said, Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness. I wouldn't doubt it if Sodom had pride parades. I wouldn't doubt it if uh, they had a pride month. Isn't it something that the first mentioned Sodomites were full of pride? The devil is full of pride. In Job 41, it speaks of the devil as Leviathan. And it says in Job 41, 34, that he is king over all the children of pride. In the rapper Little Nas X's uh, pro-LGBT video for Montero, he kills the devil at the end of the video and sits on his throne. In a sense, he became king of pride, just out in the open with his sin, promoting it in front of all the people to see. That is pride at its finest. At the beginning of the video, he is dressed up like Eve, so cross-dressing with the serpent chasing him. The homosexual pride is being thrown in your faces. In Psalm 10.4, it says, The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Some people are so prideful that it's written all over their face. Because of that pride, they won't seek God. And that verse said, God is not in all his thoughts. Romans one twenty eight has a similar verse where it says, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. They many times don't want to retain God in their knowledge or their thoughts because it would bring thoughts of conviction. In Psalm 73.6 it says, Therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain. So it's, it's a bondage. Many homosexuals would say, I'm free to be what I want to be. But their freedom is really bondage. Their pride compasses them about as a chain. You start off thinking you're in control of sin and then it controls you. Proverbs 8.13 says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy. And the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. That's what God said. He said he hates evil and he hates pride. Pride and arrogancy are two things that God hates. So to have a pride month is wrong. Not just because of homosexuality, but because of pride being a sin. If someone is tempted by the sin of homosexuality, and, you know, they're struggling with it, that's one thing. But to be prideful of it and have a month to celebrate it, I think that's far worse. It's far worse to be proud about the sin than to do the sin itself. That's not the proper attitude towards sin. Proverbs 11.2 says, When pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. Proverbs 29.23, A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. The best thing you could do today is swallow your pride enough to admit your guilt of sin. Come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and believe on him. Because he's the only one that's good. Now the next reason. God's plan is for man and woman to marry. In Genesis one twenty seven, it says, So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. God showed us the pattern for marriage in the scriptures. He made a man and a woman. 
He made it possible for them to have children together. Homosexuals can't reproduce. They can't become one flesh. In Genesis 2, 24, it says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Somebody asked me what I think about them, you know, making it possible for homosexuals to get married. Well, the thing is, they can't get married in the eyes of God. You know, some papers doesn't make them married in the eyes of God. The, the problem with it, though, is that shows an acceptance of that sin. But a man becomes one flesh with his wife when they have sex. Homosexuals cannot become one flesh. Therefore, none of their marriages are seen as honorable in the sight of God. In Genesis 5-2, it says, Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and he called their name Adam in the day when they were created. God's plan was for there to be men and women, and while God gives us a choice to make decisions on how how are we going to if we're going to choose him or reject him we don't make the decision of what sex we are i was born a man and i'm a man because that's what i was born you don't just change the way god made you in mark 10 5 through 7 it says and jesus answered and said unto them for the hardness of your heart he wrote you this precept but from the beginning of the creation god made them male and female for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. You'll see through the scriptures that the Lord never says anything good about or promotes homosexuality. Homosexuality doesn't reflect the picture of Jesus Christ and the church. You see, the church is all born-again believers. All Christians make up the church, the bride of Christ. And then Ephesians 5, 22 through 25, it says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. When you get married, you are a picture of, of the bride of Christ. The husband is a picture of Jesus Christ. The wife is a picture of the bride of Christ, which is made up of every Christian. Homosexuality does not reflect the picture because it doesn't involve a bride and a groom. If it's a groom and a groom, or a bride and a bride, then it messes up the picture. Now, the third thing why Pride Month is wrong is because homosexuality is not convenient. It says in Romans 1, 26 through 28, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is in unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. The sin of homosexuality is not convenient because their parts simply do not go together. Notice the convenience of a man and woman relationship. The parts go together. God made it possible for them to reproduce. The average woman is attracted to a man. The average man is attracted to a woman. The fact that men and women have everything needed to have a child proves God's existence. We believe he's real because the Bible says it's so, but if someone is looking for outward evidence, how much more do you need than that? God plainly tells us the homosexual relationship is not convenient. But the man and woman relationship is. Now the next thing, it robs the rainbow. Pride Month robs the rainbow. Everywhere I'm seeing this rainbow, on, on a Facebook it's got it, at Target, at Walmart, the Skittles company is did something different for their Skittles bags because of Pride Month. During Pride Month, I have seen the rainbow used to celebrate pride. They took God's symbol and perverted it. The rainbow was a, was a token of the covenant between God and Noah in Genesis chapter 9. The rainbow has a connection to God's throne in Revelation 4.3 and Revelation 10.1. The idea of taking the rainbow to promote sin could have come from no other than the devil himself. He wants to ascend above God's throne. So why not take one of the things that are around God's throne and pervert that? That's what he did. 
He wants to ascend above God's throne. He wants to be like the Most High, as it says in Isaiah 14. What better way for him to do this than to take the things of God and twist them? To take the husband and wife relationship and twist it. To take the rainbow and twist it. And make people proud of their sin instead of broken about their sin. The next thing. It attempts to paint sin as innocent. That's what this month is all about. This month is associated with smiling faces, glitter, rainbow colors, and people pretending to be truly happy in a perverted lifestyle. Sin paints a pretty picture, but the end is death. Isaiah 5.20 says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Notice how everything has to have a jolly old homosexual on it to make you think this sinful lifestyle is, is something to be desired. They call evil good and good evil. They put darkness for light and light for darkness. They call the Christians evil. They call what they're doing good. They don't like us because we go against the sin of homosexuality. So they call what's good evil. They call the scriptures evil because it goes against their sin. If a man will do to a man what homosexuals do to, the, do to each other, then this is a very untrustworthy man with no morals. The plan of this world is to push this sin in your face <coughs> to the point that you don't see it as sin anymore. The more you get conditioned to it, the softer you get towards it. Romans 7.13 shows us how the commandment makes sin become exceeding sinful. But this world wants to soften you up towards sin. They want to make sin appear innocent and beautiful and colorful and sparkly and just make it seem innocent enough for kids to even be involved in it. But number six, this month is wrong because what's being celebrated kills the country. In Psalm 917, it says, The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. This nation has forgotten God. At least the people in leadership have. The people that are highly esteemed have forgotten God. I do believe the average man on the street still believes homosexuality is unnatural. I believe there still are some good people that's trying to live right. However, it is becoming more and more accepted by the day, the homosexuality. This sin will lead to the downfall of this country, just like it did for Sodom. God rained uh, brimstone and fire down on them. In Genesis 19.24, the same way Sodom faces judgment of God is the same way America will face judgment for going along with the perverted sins of the LGBT movement. America is even more responsible than Sodom. We have had so much clear teaching and truth from the scriptures. This is something that Sodom didn't have. The plan they have today in this country is to make this country perverted. They want rid of morals. If they can get rid of morals, then they can destroy the country. In Proverbs 14.34, Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Now the next thing, number seven, it goes beyond flesh. Some sins are worse than others. Homosexuality is worse than your average sin because it goes against nature. There are certain sins that cross a line that go beyond the flesh. Romans 1.26 says, For this cause God gave them up into vile affections, for even the, their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. The woman changed the natural use into something else. They started going for other women, and it caused this vile affections. Even with the loss of even with the lost world, they can see that homosexuality is against nature and a very disgusting act. The average lost person. For example, on old TV shows even, that were dirty TV shows, they would poke fun at homosexuality because it's unnatural. Things like that. But now you have even the rappers are coming out as gay. Tyler the Creator, Little Nas X, Open Sodomites. The YouTube trending section is full of homosexuality. Jeffree Star and people like that. The more they can push it in your face, the more numb to it you will become. Notice how the sin of the sodomites is connected to spiritual wickedness and how it goes beyond your average fleshly sin. In Jude 6-8, through 8, 
It's associated with the angels that committed fornication. It, back in Genesis, the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah is compared to the sin of the angels, <coughs> showing you that sin went beyond flesh. The sin of homosexuality went beyond flesh. It got into a most likely, it's a most likely associated with unclean spirits. It's so unnatural. Number eight, it leads to open, unashamed rebellion in more aspects of life. In Isaiah 3, 9, it says, The show of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. It is seen as a great thing to come out of the closet about your homosexuality today. They don't want you to hide it. They want you to parade it. They want you to come out and hide it not. They want you to declare it as the sin of Sodom. It's on every commercial. It's in all the movies. They throw in the gay guy on the TV shows. They want it out there in the open to make you desensitized to it. They want you to come out and say, I'm not ashamed. Now, I'm a sinner too. I sin every day, most likely in thought or in some way. But the thing is, I'm ashamed of every sin I'm committing. Anything that I ever did I, against the Bible is a sin, and I'm sorry that I did it. I'm not going out there having a pride parade about any sin that I've committed. Romans 6.21 says, What fruit had ye, in the, had ye then in those things, whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. There needs to be some shame and sorrow about the sins you have committed against God. Jeremiah 6.15 says, Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. I mean, grown men can kiss each other in the mouth and not even blush afterwards. They can put their wrists limp like a woman and talk like a teenage girl, and there is no shame on their face. People say, He's so nice and sweet. He ain't nice and sweet. And I'm not trying to be mean, but never trust a man that will kiss another man in the mouth like you do your wife. There's no telling what else he will do. In Ezra 9, 6, it says, Oh my God, I am ashamed and blush to lift up my face to thee, my God, for our iniquities are increased over our head and our trespasses grown up into the heavens. That's the right attitude. If you are a homosexual, you can come to God like that and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can be saved. God isn't going to turn you away. It doesn't matter if you've had gay sex for 40 years. He'll still save you. God loved you enough to die for your sins. He was buried and resurrected. And he is offering you the free gift of salvation. Quit being so prideful. Humble yourself before God. Come to him as a guilty sinner. And believe the gospel before it's too late. When someone gets prideful about a, uh, being a homosexual... It will only lead to more people wanting to come out and be prideful about their sin. What's next? Obviously, the man-boy love association. One day, people will be fighting for the right to love your eight-year-old son. Sin gets worse with time. The Bible says evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. There was a day when people began to accept open fornication. Now they're accepting the sodomites. It only goes down from here. Next, it'll be pedophilia and bestiality. That's what's on the way. <coughs> but the next thing, it is an attack on the family. In 2 Timothy 3.15, it says, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Your child ought to be brought up knowing the holy scriptures. When a child grows up in a sodomite home, it won't be a Bible home. They aren't going to give him the Bible because it goes against their lifestyle. If they do, then they leave out the parts that goes against what they do in their life. A family that isn't brought up in the scriptures will have sorrows. In Proverbs 22, 6, it says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. A kid shouldn't have two daddies. A kid shouldn't have two mamas. He needs a mother and a father. He needs that balance. The Bible shows you that both are needed. In Psalm 103, 13, it says, Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. First Thessalonians 2, 7, But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse 
cherisheth her children. A son needs a man to train him up like a man. He doesn't need two daddies that act like mamas. He doesn't need a mom that acts like a dad and another mom that acts like a mom. He needs to see a mother that acts like a mother and a dad that acts like a dad. That's just common sense. Homosexuality is an attack on the family. If they can push homosexuality, it destroys families. They don't want the good, wholesome, balanced family life. They don't want that. They want people growing up in broken homes. They want people to have two daddies, two mamas, single mama, things like that. But the kids growing up in these sodomite homes, they grew up in an anti-scriptural home, and they aren't brought up in the way that they should go. They're not brought up in that good and narrow way. They are brought up on the path to destruction. If a boy is raised by two sodomites, then he is raised up by people who have no morals. They will grow up and vote for the leaders who will have no morals. The politicians exploit people like that. But a home with a mother and a father who both live in the word and try their best to work and teach their kids will build a lot better society than a sodomite led home. Number 10, it has become an attack on our rights. What's celebrated in this Pride Month is things that's become an attack on our rights. When the angels came to Sodom, the Sodomites wanted to have sex with the angels. In Genesis 19, 4 and 5, it says, But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, could pass the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter, and they called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. That is, know them sexually. They demanded that lot give them what they wanted. They do a similar thing in Judges 19. The thing is, the LGBT movement doesn't just want rights. They want rights that would override your rights. They are so full of pride that they think that you owe them something. I have a right to call a man Mr., Sir, Young Man, Dude, Homie, or whatever else I want to do. They shouldn't have rights that make me call them something that they aren't biologically. They want it made to where you have to call them by their preferred pronoun. Like a dude who acts like a woman, he wants me to call him Mrs. Demi Lovato wants to be called they. How does that even make sense? Call her they? She's one person. How does it make sense to call one person a they? Maybe she is a they, because the unclean spirit said, His name is Legion, for we are many. In Mark 5, 8 and 9, Jesus said, what is your name? And he said, Legion, for we are many, because the guy had so many unclean spirits in him. But these people could be so full of devils that they are a them instead of just a he and a she because they're just so full of so many devils or something. But I shouldn't have to call a boy a girl when obviously they're not a girl. Number 11, the thing that celebrated this month denies common sense. <laughs> in 1 Samuel twenty five twenty two, it says, So and more also do God unto the enemies of David. If I leave of all that pertain to him, by the morning light any that pisseth against the wall. Those who piss against the wall are men. Anyone who, who's using common sense knows that a man shouldn't go to the little girl's room. When this becomes more common, are you really going to feel safe with that perverted man who is dressed up like a woman going into the bathroom with your daughter? And don't tell me you think he's sweet and innocent. He's not a sweet and innocent man just being what God made him because God didn't make him to be that way. Back a long time ago, if a man went to the woman's restroom, they'd come out screaming. Now, it is in... How is it even in a discussion that they should be able to use the same bathroom as a woman? If you pisseth against the wall, as the verse said, you know, that's referring to a man, you should go to the bathroom where other people do that same thing. Don't go in the women's restroom and sit down in the toilet like a woman. Where is your head? This country is so twisted that they want men to go into the girls' bathroom who even thought up this stuff? That's crazy. I never 
even heard of something like that. This country is so twisted that they want to be called she when they are a he. And if you call them sir instead of miss, they will literally just go crazy and destroy your store you're in or something. Number 12, it feeds the flesh. The homosexual lifestyle feeds the flesh. In Galatians 5.19, it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, unable to control your lusts. The sodomite lifestyle is a lifestyle of serving the flesh. In Romans 8.13, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. You're putting yourself into an early grave. It's not love. It's serving yourself. It goes beyond anything as nasty as an animal would do. It does nothing but feed the flesh. Now the last thing. They're after the kids. In Mark 9, 20 through 21, it says, And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. And Jesus, it says, and he asked his father, Jesus asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? <coughs> and he said, Of a child. The devils come to you, came to the boy when he was a child. Why do you think Disney, Pixar, Nickelodeon, Disney Plus... Netflix, Amazon Prime, and all these organizations are pushing this sodomite stuff in the cartoons. Clifford the Big Red Dog, Arthur, um, M Mitchells versus the Machines, all of these cartoons with LGBT characters. Why are they pushing this on the kids so much? They want to mold them while they are young. If they can pervert their minds now, then they can pervert their bodies later. If you mold their minds while they are young, they will grow up with no morals. You're going to have a whole bunch, a whole generation of kids that will accept homosexuality because the cartoons taught them homosexuality. You're going to have a whole generation of people that will go either way. They'll go straight, they'll go queer. They'll do anything. They're going to be brought up with no morals. Anything goes because when you start pushing things like homosexuality that goes against the Bible, you don't live by the Bible, so therefore you become your own final authority. Whatever feels right to you is must be right. And that's not the way to live. I mean, for Ted Bundy, uh, it felt right to him to kill women when he was doing the sex acts with them. You know, that's not right just because he likes it. Just because you like something don't mean it's right. And the Bible plainly said, Homosexuality is wrong. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It's an abomination. And that's in the same chapter as incest, bestiality, and adultery. Do you think those three things are, are okay? And if you admit that those three things are wrong then why would you say homosexuality is okay when it's said that it's wrong smack dab in the middle of all three of those things? But like I said, Genesis 19, 4 and 5, it says, but before, in, in, in Sodom, it says, but before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, come past the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. Notice it was both old and young men that came to attempt and rape the angels. The young had already been affected by the morals of the older men. They're after the kids. That's the most horrible thing about this whole situation. You have a full attack on your children. They want your children to become perverted. They want to teach this in the schools. In some schools in California, I believe it was, they're, they're teaching children about homosexual sex. They're teaching them about anal sex. 
All this perverted stuff. I mean, your kids don't need to know that stuff. And they they want to get in their minds, mold them while they're young. They want to demoralize you. All the movies, all the TV shows, got to have that one gay character on there to, to give you that soft spot for them. And make you think, oh, they're so sweet. They're just, they're just not, they're just different. They're not sweet. A man that would do to another man what sodomites do to each other, they're not sweet. They're sick. And now, if you're a homosexual listening to this, quit being, quit celebrating your sin. Because Jesus Christ had to die for those sins. And he's offering you the free gift of salvation. He wants you to come to him right now and believe the gospel. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and resurrected. He shed his blood for every sin you ever committed. Every sodomite act you ever committed. He paid for that sin. He died. For, he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Anybody can be saved. It don't matter who you are. So I pray that you will come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner that you are and believe the gospel.